welcome to Solo Performer Podcast, where I interview the best of the best solo performers of all kinds from all over the world. We go in depth and uncover the tips, secrets, and hacks that these pros use on a nightly basis to play amazing gigs. So if you're a guitar player, piano player, singer, or even if you use tracks, this is the podcast for you. So before we get started with today's episode, I'd like to give you a quick reminder. If you're a solo, duo, or even trio performer, and you're looking to bring your performance to the next level, you'll want to check this out. Now, what this is, is I'll send you a quick email twice a month with tips, tricks, and hacks that the pros use to play gigs better and to play more gigs. And as you may or may not know, I've booked and played over 5,000 gigs since 1998. And in these emails, I'm going to share with you the things I've learned over the years, from the hard lessons to the funny stories. Man, these emails are educational and entertaining, or at least I think they're entertaining, right? So, but with any solo performer will get a lot of value from these. So it doesn't matter if you're just starting out and have never played a gig, or maybe you've done a few gigs before but want to gig more consistently, I highly recommend you sign up today. Just go to solo-performer.com to register. That's solo-performer.com, and I'll see you later. Now, back to the podcast. Today's guest on the premiere episode of Solo Performer Podcast is P.D. Brody. P.D. has been playing solo gigs in New Jersey for about a decade now, and I've watched him grow from a kid who wanted to play some gigs to a guy who is absolutely rocking it. He consistently plays three to four nights a week, and he's driven himself across the country several times playing gigs and taking in the sights. He has a tremendous amount of insight and is very forthcoming and sharing his knowledge with us. In this episode, we're going to talk about, you know, gateway drug songs, how to get your first gig, shyness, booking gigs and networking, pricing your gig, and why you should max out your credit card when you buy a guitar, that's a fun one, and songs you must know. So here he is, without further ado, P.D. Brody. So man, how you been? I've been good. Uh, you know, work, working the double, you know, I have my day job and then, you know, playing mm-hmm. music and it's, it's, it's picked up since uh, COVID restrictions opened. Um, I've been out four or five nights a week the last couple months and I'm sure you can hear it in my voice right yeah. now <laughs> <laughs> good man that's but, good uh, yeah. yeah and i've uh slowly increased my wages you know we've we've talked about it um yeah. but, um i'm out for for a little bit more now mm. you know i don't leave the house for un, un, under a couple hundred which you know i'm sure is still low to you but that's moving the needle a little bit up this way anyway yeah well, well you know it depends so like you know i just moved so I'm kind of on the low end again because I got to start over, you know, even right. though I'm playing six, seven nights. And, you know, over here, I could do like 10 gigs a week if I wanted. I, I, I double up a lot. I turn down a lot of stuff. You know, at the point now where I'm turning down more than I'm accepting. And so I'm about to wow. about to start raising my prices, you know, but it, it's it's I had to kind of start out a little lower than where I was before. But, uh, you know, right. over here, though, in Florida, the tips are a little better than where I was in Louisiana. So it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's not too bad. So. All that retired money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, man, you, so you, you, you're doing that. You, you work a day job. That, that is a grind. What's, what's your day job? I work with uh, special needs kids currently. Um, I, have, I have my teaching degree. Um, I've been with, uh, I've been with this one particular school, uh, this would be the end of my second year going into my third at the same place. So some continuity there. Um, but, uh, no, it works, works good. I mean, I'm, I'm out by three and, uh, weekends and summers off, which, which is awesome. Um, and it's good to have the health, health benefits. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's a good thing. That's a good thing. So when school is in, are you playing those nights too? And then, uh, teaching in the morning? Wow. Um, for the most part, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, every now and again, I'll have a Wednesday. Every now and again, I'll book some Sundays. But, so uh, so basically, yeah. Friday is what you got to get through that Friday morning. That's the rough one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> man, that's, that is a grind, man. You're working hard. I love it. I love it. I'm grind. Uh, yeah, man. So, yeah, we, so we, we've known each other, what, like 10, 10 years now? Ten years ago, I met I you. I want to say just just about, yeah. Uncle Roy's barbecue, uh, Roy's, at Roy's yeah. annual thing, which you know still still happening. Um, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I'm a lot busier now, so I usually have to dip out early because I'm playing at night. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. So they're still doing, like, the jam and everything? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, last year was a little bit down. I think there was there was maybe 20 people there last year. Right, um, yeah. Just because of things. But this year, there's supposed to be 200, so he said. Wow. So, <laughs> <we'll see. laughs> yeah. Everybody's yeah. ready for Uncle Roy's barbecue. Uh huh. Some, some things don't don't change, including Uncle Roy. So. <laughs> That's a good thing. Got to count that consistency. <laughs> Somebody yeah. needs to be consistent. Oh man. So Perry, where? Um, well, anyways, let's get started. You're you're. I call you Perry. I know you're Perry, but your professional name is P. D. Brody. Correct. That's what you go by. Correct. That's All my. Right. That's my stage name. Your stage yeah. name, right? So what what made you decide to go from Perry to P. D. I. Uh, Never really liked Perry. I thought that oh. was kind of lame. But you know, I'm, I'm I'm sort of toying with 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 a name change. Um, a lot of people know me by my, by last name up here. Uh, and uh, ever since going to Memphis and getting hooked on the blues, I thought I'd do the three name thing, like Perry, Dale, Brody. You know, like there's Stevie Ray. Oh, Ball, yeah, 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 yeah. Or you could be like so, you know, you know um, like those old blues guys used to name themselves after handicap, like Blind. You know. Willie, whatever you could find, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> something wrong, you know, hemorrhoidal. Something wrong with me. Yeah, hemorrho- hemorrhoidal, <laughs> hemorrhoidal Dave Wilson or something. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, I'll, have, I'll, have, I'll have lots to choose from. Yeah, well, that's so what I would go I'd with. i go that route. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, so you're, you're in New Jersey. What part of New Jersey are you in? What, where Where's your stomping grounds? Uh, I live in uh, uh, Union. Union County, which uh, I can make it to downtown Manhattan in 20 minutes on a on a you know, with no traffic. Yeah, um, that's the that's the caveat. There's always traffic. But, All right, um, half hour away from New York City, so more more North Jersey. But um, I can make it to Philly in about an hour and a half. Philly's got a really cool scene down there as well. Mm-hmm. So anytime I want to dip my toe in there, yeah. you know, that's that's usually always fun. Yeah. So when you talk about these scenes, like in New York and Philly, is that for more your original music, or is that what you're doing, like with your cover acoustic thing? Or um, I'm doing a lot of um, cover bar gigs mostly. Mm-hmm. Um, every now and again, I'll do like more of a showcasey thing where I can play originals, sell some more CDs. Um, but majority of my gigs, uh, I'm playing Stones and Tom Petty and Beatles right. and yeah. You know, brown eyed girl and all that stuff. Absolutely, so, man. That's that's what you got to do to make a living. You know. That's what that's yeah. what puts puts the coins in the in the tip cup. Right. A lot of people getting started don't understand that. You know, they they think they're going to go up there and, and and play whatever they want, and people are going to love it. And that's not the case, man. If people don't, uh, if they don't know or have heard the song you're playing before, they tune out real quick. Is that how you? Yeah. Is that what you find? Yeah, there, there's certain rooms that I play at. Um, you know, if, if it's a night where people are listening, I may throw an original out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it, but but it just depends. You know, a lot of the, the louder bars and clubs and stuff. You know, nobody nobody wants to hear that. So. Right, right. So basically, but, what you're saying is you're reading your audience and playing according to that. Correct, and yeah. and that just comes with doing it more and. You know, mm-hmm. get it, getting a vibe for the rooms you're playing in and the audiences you're playing for. I mean, that just comes comes with time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, is there any kind of of technique you have for that, or is it just something you just naturally do? You like, man, I can just tell this room wants to hear Tom Petty, and then if they want to hear Tom Petty, they want to hear the Stone. You know, what I mean, it's, or is it just you have a system for it, or? Um, if I hear people uh, applaud, um, it means I know they're kind of listening, and then. If it, you know if that happens, then maybe I can throw you know an upbeat original in there to kind of you know test the waters and then see mm-hmm. how it goes. Um, every now and again, you know, I'll hit it. Yeah. Um, or, or every now and again, someone will come up and request an original. Mm-hmm. Um, at which case, I would oblige, um, and I'm usually surprised by that. Yeah. Um, but that does happen um, every now and again. Mm-hmm. So that's that's always fun. Yeah. So we, when when that happens, though, I mean, I know my experience is. In fact, I don't, I don't even play originals at my gig ever, just because I find they tune out. Even when someone requests it, because you know the one person may request it, but everyone else in the building is like, "Well, what what the hell is sure. that?" <laughs> you know what I mean? And they just tune out. Sure. And I'm like, "Okay, you know." So I I I just I don't even bother playing originals at the gig at, at all. Um, but that's good if you if you 
you know, have people who react to it. That's awesome. And I find that uh, um, I've been doing some stuff down in Nashville lately, which which sort of feeds into um, that want to to play originals. And the first time I was down there, I did like a writer's round thing where, you know, they'll block out and uh, like an hour set at a time and have three or four musicians up there and they each do a song at a time and talk about it kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and the first time I did that, uh, I was playing one of my own tunes and I got to the chorus and I looked out and like everyone was looking at me yeah. and the room was quiet and it, it was so different than what I'm used to <laughs> right. <up> here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is unusual when people are listening, huh? It's uh, it um, wild. I, yeah. I, th- I think that's what a lot of people need to differentiate is that, you know, um, when you're playing a gig, you know, at a, at a bar or a restaurant or whatever for money, you know, generally you have to do cover tunes, things that people know. And yeah. there, there are times and places, for instance, like that listening room where you can play your originals and all that. And it's, it's, but it's different. You know, yeah. you have to learn the different, how to work a crowd in a different way for each of those different scenarios, right? right? Correct. It's yeah. A totally different personality you got to bring out for the two of them. Right. But like in you said, way. yeah, but like you said, though, it's, it's, you know, when, when you're like you and I, and you, 90% of what we do, or 95, even 99% of what we do are these cover gigs, when you go play something like yeah. that, and people are actually listening to you, you kind of like, well, <laughs> it's almost like <laughs> jarring. You know, it's like, what? Oh, you're listening? What? That's... <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> it's almost more, more nerve wracking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's just, it's just, yeah, like you said, different. It's, it's, it's weird, but in a good way, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice to mix it up. Nice yeah. to feel wanted, appreciated, and like someone's listening because right. a lot of nights, and, and I'm sure you know this too, you're just kind of wallpaper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, my, my whole goal is to not be wallpaper. You know, like I try to keep things right. upbeat. I try to get the audience involved, you know, which like you said, means playing brown eyed girl, making them go la la la, singing along. Blah, blah, blah. Right. But again, there are, there are times, like say when you're in a restaurant and it's maybe six o'clock and it's dinner time, they're all eating. Well, they're not going to sing along with their mouths full, you know, so you are right. kind of wallpaper. But again, like you said, and I know you know this, it comes with experience. You know when to just kind of lay back and be wallpaper and when to kind of go, hey, man, let's let's sing along. Let's get you involved. I mean, that's a... Right. Because it's, it's usually that six, that six o'clock uh, Blue Plate special crowd that, like, really doesn't want music. <laughs> right. <laughs> you, know, you, get, you, get, you get the old ladies who are like, can you turn, can you turn that him down? You know, that kind of thing. Right, right. And that's the thing, you know, um, I find it's, it's, it's like a conversation. Like, so, and, and I know a lot of musicians get upset about this. Like, you know, you walk in and they say, turn it down. Well, here's the thing. They're, they're eating their dinner. You're walking in with these speakers you know, and Correct. you're interrupt. You're in essence interrupting their conversation. You're interrupting their dinner. Yeah. You know, <laughs> That's yeah, true. right. So it, it's your job to kind of maybe you know start out low, start with some low key stuff, and then you know gently massage them into your world. You know, just kind of bring them right in gradually. You can't just go. It's not like you know when you meet somebody, you wouldn't just go up to them and go, "Hey, I'm I'm Steve. I'm Perry. You know, hello, hello, nice to meet you." You you don't do that. You're like, "Hey, <laughs> right. you know." You got to you have to find like the songs that are the gateway drug. Right there, you go the gateway drug, which which to me, <laughs> my gateway drug song is 3 a.m. That's that's the one. Oh, I word. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can start out with that. It's 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 not too soft. It's not too hard. It's like the perfect, you know. Let's let's get let's get it started, you know. And we're gonna just you know, it's not too upbeat, not too downbeat. It's just the perfect, yeah. Like right. you said, gateway song. Uh, <laughs> nice medium tempo. <laughs> right, right. That's funny, man. So, um, tell me, man, how did you? Like I said, we know we've known each other a while, um, but how did you get started? Like that very first gig you got, how did you get that gig? Um, got to go back a ways. Um, well, I started. I really started playing like throughout high school and stuff. You know, did the high school band thing and whatnot. But but as far as like a paid gig, um, that wasn't until I was about twenty one, um, and I'd, I'd been at it for you know a few years, and. Uh, a buddy called me and said that uh, this this uh, Cuban restaurant was looking for some entertainment, like like that night, yeah, like an hour and a half yeah. um, from when he called me. <laughs> um, and I said, "Sure, I'll come up." So I came up and played, and um, 
I, I would never accept this, you know, now, but yeah. it was 50 bucks and all the ropa vieja I could eat. Um, <laughs> yeah. But that was like my first paid gig. So, so I played and, you know, I was able to keep some customers in there ordering food. And it was one of those little family run places, you know, uh, abuela was in the kitchen, you know, that mm-hmm. she, she was the cook kind of thing. It was, um, and, uh, you know, I was able to keep, to keep some people there and they were, they were digging it and interested, and I guess they were talking to the owner. So the owner asked me to come back, you know, every other week. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did, you know, for for a few months, and, and that was my first regular paid gig. And then from there, you know, I started getting experience on stage, working the crowd, working a room, pacing my set. You know, yeah. like you talked about, not you know, not going in whole hog in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's really how I honed in my my craft with with these these gigs. Yeah. Um, and uh, I also got hooked up through like various open mic circles because a lot of the mm-hmm. places that have an open mic also book music on the weekends. You know, right. they'll have like a Tuesday open jam or an open mic. And then mm-hmm. so that was sort of my audition, if you will. Yeah. Um, so I'd play and the owner would be like, hey, you know, you free this, you know, this weekend. Or, yeah. So mm-hmm. I would come back and play and it just sort of snowballed from there. So mm-hmm. I guess this would have been 2013. So uh, yeah, eight eight years, <laughs> yeah, wow. you know, it's taken to, to get it to where I'm playing out, you know, four or five nights a week consistently. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, that, that, that exact scenario is what I describe to people who want to, to gig. And you know, when they ask me, that is precisely the route, you know, you can, you can send out promo kits and EPKs and Facebook. Thing. None of that works because the owner doesn't care. He doesn't know who you are. He hasn't heard you right. before, you know, exactly. and he doesn't have time to go looking at your EPK, nor does he give a shit about it, <laughs> you know, <Right. laughs> but, but like you said, some guy called you. And, and again, I got my, I have an every Tuesday gig here now. In Fly- I just moved here, what, a year ago, less than a year ago. And I got an every Tuesday gig about six months ago because, you know, the guy called me. Hey, man, can you make it tonight? Yes, I can make it. Uh, you know, we, it's, it's in an hour. Okay. I live a half hour away, but I will be there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. I went, played. They liked me. They hired me every Tuesday. You know, and, and then from there, you get other gig. You know, you get other gigs from from playing that gig well. You know what I mean? Right. If, you, if you go there mm-hmm. and you stink up the joint. And, 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 you know, by playing a gig well, too, I don't mean you got to be perfect and great. You just have to play songs people like to a, right. in a, in a, you know, halfway good manner. <laughs> you know, you don't have to be great right. at it. Yeah. You know, like if right. you at if, least make them, make them happy and keep them spending money. Yeah, exactly. And that's what the owners of the places who hire you want. You know, like yep. uh, I always say, you know, like you can play brown eyed girl poorly or play some song that nobody ever heard perfectly, and guess which one's going to get the reaction? You know, mm-hmm. yeah, everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> right? So yeah, man, that that is the exact scenario I describe, man. You don't worry about um, you know EPKs and you know even Facebook and all that stuff, man. Just you know network, you know get get somebody who you know who knows somebody who owns yep. a place and. Once you get that first one, it's like putting a wedge in the door or putting a crowbar in the door. You know, you yeah. <laughs> you just pry it open. Yep. Mm. All all about making your circle as wide as possible, shaking as many hands. Yeah. You know, because you you don't know who knows who and right. You know, I can't tell you how many gigs I've got because I shook hands with somebody who knew somebody, and then I play that gig. And at the gig, there's somebody there who's having a wedding in six months. They hire me for a wedding, and it's all the snowballs from there. Yeah, good old fashioned networking. Um, mm-hmm. The thing is, you know, I, I'm you know I'm a pretty shy person by nature, and networking doesn't come naturally to me. But I, I find with musicians and all that, I, I, there's a more of an ease, and so it's a little easier. I mean, how, how are you about that? You're you're a pretty outgoing dude. Are you shy? What, what, would, what would you say you are? I'm I'm getting better. Um, I think. Uh, I think as far as securing the gigs, um, it, I, I don't have that problem. Um, where, where I am shy is like, oh, how much do you charge for X amount? You know, yeah. And it's like you don't you don't want to come in too high. You don't want to scare them, but you also want to get what you're worth. And I think that's the, that's a balance that you have to find. Yeah. Over time. Well, you know um, what you know what I found. I always I always give them my highest rate, and 
if they don't want to pay it, they'll usually be, well, can you, they'll usually ask, hey, can you come down? You know, I find you rarely right. scare them away. Um, and it does two things, I think. It makes them realize, hey, you know, this guy is asking for this, so he's worth that. You know, let's say, you know, someone wants to hire you, at a, you say, well, $500. And you're like, well, I don't know, maybe 250 And you're like, okay, I could do it for 250 But, you know, the fact that you ask for 500 makes you even even more valuable. You know what I mean? And, sure, that's true. And then a lot of times you'll get it. <laughs> you, you'll, you'll be surprised. And when you ask for that high end, you'll be surprised at how many times you actually get it. You know? So that's why I always say don't be just – but. It been, and don't be like, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, five hundred dollars. Be like, yeah, no, sure. I, yeah, yeah, no, you got to say, yeah, say, five hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that that's what I've learned. You know, and I'm kind of like I, I'm a pretty shy person by nature, and people understand that a lot of musicians are kind of shy mm-hmm. and uh, introverted or whatever you want to call it, uh, but, but they don't understand it because we can get on stage in front of you know anywhere from 30 to 30,000 people and be like, yeah, do, 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 you know, but yet. Right. It comes easy. Right. And you ask a girl out to lunch, forget about it. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that, that is a, um, a common thread I've found, but anyway, yeah, it's, 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 it's easier to overcome. And, and it, but again, it makes networking even that more important. I think, you know, like you said, it's, it's just yeah. huge. And the more you do it, the more experience you, you get with it and the more confident you will get. Absolutely. As you go along. You have to. You have to. You have to start somewhere. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, but it all gets easier from from that point on. Yeah, it does. It does. It's. Uh, but it's just. It's a little. When you're first starting out, I, I get it. It's, and and still, even now, you know, when I moved to this new town, meeting new people and all that, it's. It was still a little scary, you know, trying to network and meet people and all that, you know. But I think the important thing is just to be genuine and be a, be a nice person. Be genuine. And even though you're trying to get gigs, ultimately, it's to not have an agenda. You know what I mean? Like right. You're just meeting people, and you're making friends, and you're genuinely developing friendships, and that's it. You know what I mean? You're not being like, hey, here's my card. Right. Come, you know, you're not coming out the gate asking for things. You know, you have to be able to it's, – it's a, it's a long, long process. You know, you meet somebody, you become friends with them. You know, they may know somebody who helps you out. It's, you know, whatever. It's – it's not a, uh, yeah, don't go in guns blazing going, hey, man, I want a gig, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know. Right. <laughs> it's all, take, it takes time, and you got to finesse it, and you sort of hone, hone in your craft and your, and your pitch, you know, and the, the, way you, the way you go about your business. Yeah. You know, that's all developed. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so, so speaking of first gigs, I mean, how did you know you were ready? Like, so the guy called you up to go to the Cuban restaurant, and you're like, did you think, man, I'm not ready for this? Or are you like, yes, I'm ready for this. I'm ready. What, what was what was that like? I'd I'd been waiting for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was uh, I was coming out of a period where, you know, I was doing a lot of those like pay to play shows where. Oh you know, no! Don't tell me that. The, no. They'll put. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> well, <laughs> rookie rookie mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know where you, you they put you on a bill with with a touring act that comes through and mm-hmm. you got to sell 20 tickets at 15 mm-hmm. bucks a head if you meet the quota they'll give you two bucks a head yeah that whole racket yep. not nonsense yeah um so i was I, I this is coming out of years of that so when uh yolanda's called me that's the name of the, name of the restaurant oh. I, I was ready to go yeah like, i'd been waiting in the wings for this yeah. and was 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 ready was just ready to take it and, yeah yeah you know, i felt like i put on a pretty good show uh-huh. then um and, you know, the more I got in there, you know, like I said, the more I honed my craft and paced my set and yeah. forced me to learn learn new songs to fit, to fill the time up. Right. And, um, and, and, you know, just once I got in there, that, that, was, that was my first consistent paid gig at 21 after doing the band, yeah. the, you know, the, that, that pay-to-play thing for, for years and, you know, being rejected from, you know, all, all those, Song competitions on TV. You know, ah, like, yeah, yeah. That's, tried out for those. Yeah, and, you know. So, but nah, so to have an opportunity to like make a little money at this was, mm. was a big thing. But here's the thing, you know, you look at the majority of those people who even got to the finals on those song competitions. You probably right now have a better career than most of those people. Would you? Agree? Well, I. Yeah, um, and uh, an acquaintance of mine is in, in, in the same circle. Um, he actually made it. 
on one of those shows to mm-hmm. the, you know, he's in the top 10 or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was a couple years ago. And, uh, you know, he's playing kind of the same place that I'm playing at right now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know, back back in Louisiana, the there's show a that promises. yeah, yeah. There's a guy who you know he he went on the Voice back in Louisiana, where I'm from, and um, and he's great, great. But but it just just shows you how crappy these shows are, right? He's an amazing singer. He's great, but he's doing the same circuit I was doing over there. You know, it's like man, yeah. you get that high, and then now you you got to play these gigs. You know, so it's like man, yeah. I think those shows are crap. Uh, yeah, it's all for it's all for TV and views. Yeah, yeah. I think you're better off I just think. yeah take taking the the PD Brody route and honing your craft and building a career over time and um, you'll sus- yeah. you'll sustain it a lot longer and probably make a lot more money in the long run. You know, over the years. You know. Yeah, you you really build your your following and your fan base. I mean, I know on my on my music Facebook page, I forget how many likes or follows I have right now, but mm-hmm. I probably know. Two thirds of them personally. Yeah, and that's great. That I've met them at I've met them at a show, and then they've liked my page, and or have come mm. back to see me. And, right, <laughs> right. So those are like real people, <laughs> right? You know, not just somebody you know click click bait in your video. Right. Yeah, and um, that's something I want to get into you with later, but we'll we'll do it now since you you mentioned it. Um, is that you know, do you find um, y- like social media? You know, you can post and post and post, but I mean, are people coming out because of social media, or do you find that it's just kind of, you know, there? Um, I think I had better success before all this algorithm stuff came out. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, then, um, and then I know there's the whole you can uh, you can post like an ad and like promote it if you pay yeah. and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, ever since the algorithm thing came out, you know, I've got, you know, however, however many thousand likes on my Facebook, but, but I've found sort of my, my posts kind of only go through the same 30 people. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. And so ever, ever since they, they switched that up on, on Facebook anyway, um, sort of hasn't been a tool. It's really been a tool um, when I'm at a show. I can send people there, right? So they, they yeah. see me at a show, they like what they hear, where mm. can I hear more? So I give them a business card, or I say, hey, you can find P.D. Brody on Facebook, and they yeah. go and follow me there. So if they're ever looking for me actively, they can log on and see my schedule. I post you know, my stuff up there, but, but I'm not really using it as a cornerstone of promoting myself. Right at the moment, yeah. just because of all all the nonsense going on with algorithms and yeah. targeting and all that stuff. Right. Yeah, I found the same thing when when I first got on Facebook like '08, and it was like amazing. Like you know, I would post something yeah. on Facebook, and people would fill in the place on a Tuesday night because they saw it on Facebook. But like you, you know, I, I I don't agree with these people who are trying to get likes from people they don't even like. You know, just to have all these likes because it it doesn't make any difference whatsoever even like you said right. you have people who you know personally who like your page and they're still not seeing what's going on there so that's just a, a total waste of time to try to to build likes on that stuff you know yeah. B- but having said that i you know, post every day where i'm playing because you know somebody might see it and they might come out you know and it's it's free yeah. <laughs> to post you know so i'm not paying for ads yeah but um yeah, so um, I, I and you do a good bit of personal social media posting because uh, I keep up with you, you know, like um, your car and guitar collection and <laughs> dude, that that yeah. sweet telly man. Tell me about that telly. Yeah, so uh, my my late father was a musician. That's sort of where I got it from. He was in a band called Crying Out Loud in the eighties. Uh, Don and, Brody. And they had a video uh, on MTV, correct? They did. Uh, they they made it to MTV. They won a contest. Uh, to get their video on MTV in uh, 86, I believe it was. Wow. Was it like the basement tapes or something like that? Didn't they have a... Oh, shoot. I, I don't remember the name of it, but, um, yeah, they, they were just some boys from uh, Ohio, and they uh-huh. had uh, they moved east, won, won the contest, and I, I believe from, from the story I was told, their video debuted between Billy Joel and Rod Stewart, uh, which is not a bad place to be. No, not um, at all. Billy Joel, Rod Stewart time. sandwich, huh? 
Yeah. It's cool. So, um, um, yeah, so remind me, I'm going to put a link to it in the show notes so people can check that out. So um, remind yeah. me to get that link from you. Um, yeah, a song called, called uh, Live It Up. Live It Up? Cool. And, and, the, and, uh, and is the, the set telly in there? Playing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. The, the guitar he's playing that video is the same one that I have. Wow. And that's what I've been learning some blues on. That's what I've been playing out with the band. I have a bass player and a drummer I've been doing some more stuff with. And that's been super fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, to sort of step away from like, because I'm solo acoustic 95 to 98% of the time. Yeah. But, um, I hooked up with this drummer and bass player who are super tight. And it's given me some liberty to try things and develop my lead playing and become a more versatile musician and artist. Yeah. Um, and that's been super fun. Yeah, isn't isn't it fun? Like, and God, it's amazing how parallel our careers are at the moment. Because same thing, you know, ninety five percent of what I do is solo acoustic, but I do play with a band. And uh, monsoon, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, nice. the drummer was with Charlie Daniels for seventeen years, and he's a rock solid, Ooh. rock solid drummer. Man, what's fun about that band is that we we take requests. And the fun, the, the most fun I have is when people request a song, and it's like we have never played the song, but yet somehow we play the song. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, and that's fun when you got three guys who can just pull shit out of the air like that and make it happen. I love mm -hmm. it. Um, it's 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 so much fun, when, and you know, because we live. You know, I'm in North Jersey. My bass player Rob is from the Central Jersey mm -hmm. area, and then my drummer uh, Kyle's from Philly. You know, so we're an hour to two hours apart. <laughs> wow. So, you know, the fact that we can just get together and play. Yeah. You know, I call them up and say, hey, we're, we're going we're gonna to play this, this song and that song tonight. Yeah. And we just pull it off. That, that's, it, it speaks to, to, to their musicality. And, yeah. You know, the way we can pull, you know, pull something together like yeah. that. It's, it's so much fun. Yeah. It, it breaks up the monotony of, you know, pardon my language, but, you know, musical masturbation when you're playing by yourself yeah. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> exactly. you know, it's nice to have a partner <laughs> every now and then just to kind of break it up, you know, and especially. Absolutely. And I hope your band's the same way, but I know with mine, the two guys I play with are, are awesome. You know, there's no drama. There's no BS. We just. You know, just fun bunch of fun guys and good, great musicians, and uh, that that's it makes it great. It's it, it's so so much fun, so much fun playing with those boys, and yeah, um, and and they've they've invited us back. You know, there's there, there's a club up up in Morristown, and uh, we played there once, and they've invited us back. You know, we're there once a month. You know, okay, wow, uh, since, what, since about February, I think. Oh wow, what club is that? Because you know, I spent some time in Morristown. For a little bit. It was the la the laundromat. Um, they might have come into existence uh, when when you were here. It was called Dark Horse. Oh, okay, that sounds familiar. Uh, that's now laundromat. It's a speakeasy. Oh, so you walk you, in, it looks like you're going to wash your clothes, and then two of the machines open up, and you walk downstairs, and there's a bar and a stage. Get out! That's cool. So it's, is it, is it it's like? Sick, yeah. Is it like really to fool people, or is it just like like aesthetic? It's. It's an aesthetic. Yeah, like, yeah. It's not like you yeah. Know. Okay. <laughs> there's not there's there, there's there's no password or anything. Oh like, yeah, yeah. You, know, you, you gotta put a, gotta put a quarter like, in like to get. It. Is that how you pay your cover? You put exactly. quarters in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that wouldn't be a bad idea. Right. But, See. But um, it's a super swanky place. The drinks are great. The bartenders are top notch, and they have a whole <laughs> back line and, and oh. everything. It, it's it's a, it's one of the most mo one of the most fun places that it's, I play at. Wow. Just walk in, plug in, and come up and play. Wow. Yeah, pl plug and play, easy. Boom. Nice. Yeah, you gotta like that. Yeah. It's, uh, man. Um, so you know, like speaking of gigs, like what? Um, at this point, do you ever get stage fright at all? Still, or you pretty much over that? No, I, I I'm over that. Um, I the only time I can ever remember being remotely nervous was the first time I ever played in in, in front of an audience. Period, and that was the second grade talent show. Oh yeah. Um, so after, ever since ever since then, I was hooked. Yeah. So you just enjoy um, being. You're thinking about the enjoyment of being on stage and not the fear of it, huh? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, well, I take that back. I, I was nerve. I was a little nervous the first time I played with Rob and Kyle, um, because I personally felt like I was coming in kind of under the gun because they're they're super top of what they do, and I'm still learning how to yeah. play lead guitar, and I'm I, I don't do the band thing or I didn't do the band thing as often. Yeah. So I was a little nervous about me 
being able to bring enough to the table, but we, we pulled it off. You know, I, I, I'd say we got two or three songs in, we started flowing and then all, all that went away. Wow. Um, you know, they made it seamless. That's so cool. I, you know, I thank them for having the confidence in me to, to, to come up all, all the way, you know, to my neck of the woods and, you know, play with me and, you know, it's, it, it's given me the confidence and helped me kind of explore the guitar in, in ways I hadn't before. Yeah. So, oh, oh, getting back to that guitar, that telly. What year, what year is your telly? It's a 72, 72 Fender Telly Custom. Nice. Black on black. And, uh, it's it's been it's it plays. I I've, I've also I've got a get I've got a newer Gibson, but this '72 Tele plays a lot better. It's got a lot more tone in it, and of course the the heritage of it. It's just yeah, oh yeah, super cool. Yeah. So you um, that Gibson? That's a 335 that you have. That yeah, yeah. yep, a uh, Pel- Pelham Blue 335. I got from Memphis um, when they were there. I was down in 2016. And, picked it up at the factory which is kind of cool yeah i remember when you got that i think was that when you came to my house down in louisiana and you went back up to memphis and you got that guitar is that I how think it, it was yeah i think that was on that tour yep yeah yeah <laughs> i usually come back come back from tour with more guitars than <laughs> <laughs> well so uh, speak we were talking to social media earlier you man you, you your hobbies are collecting guitars and cars now so, I mean, is there any way you could come up with a more expensive hobby than collecting guitars and cars? I mean, uh, I mean yachts, maybe gotta, you could collect yachts. Buy, <laughs> yachts or, or or get married and have kids, maybe. But, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, I mean, that's the only level up I can think of. Oh, but, man. Uh, for now, I enjoy it. You know, I, 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 bought, I bought a Corvette a couple of years, an 88 Corvette that I've been chewing around in a couple of years ago, and yeah. having fun with that. And, yeah. You know, you know, I show that off on social media too, because I want people to see, like, hey, you know, there's there's more to me than just me on stage. Yeah, um, and that's sort of why why I do it. Yeah, you you do a great job of bringing personality into your social media, which uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, um, I'm terrible. I I I I just don't. I don't even think about it most of the time. You know, I, I like. Wake up in the morning. I post where I'm playing that day, and it's usually very dry post. You know, I'm play, you know, playing at you know blah 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 tonight from six to ten. I'll put up a picture. Boof, <laughs> done. You know what I mean? It's it's like um, I don't know, I don't know. I just if if I felt I was getting more out of social media, I might do it a little more. But uh, man, I don't know. It's and I wish. I mean, I wish I was doing more. <laughs> really? Wow. You know, I, I feel like I could be, yeah, I mean, I feel like I could be more more engaging. And, you yeah. know, I know people who post, like, like you know, questions and things like that, and, and, and they're, they post about, like, pop pop culture and whatnot, and, and me, I, 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 I could get shit. But, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, but I think, I think whatever you post has to be, you know, authentically you. Like, you can't fake it. If right. you fake it, then it, does, then it, it doesn't work. Absolutely. And I, I think that's what... So, so if, the, if the dry post about uh, about your gig that night is what you... Then that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, that's tr- just you. Good, yeah, good point. <laughs> good point. But, uh, yeah, I, I enjoy your social media. It's, uh, you know, that's how I know about your guitar collection and your Corvette. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all my all my problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, all my credit card problems. <laughs> well, I didn't know you have. I didn't know you having credit card problems. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> I pay them. I pay them off. It's just. I, I, I oh, I see. To pay for the pay anyway. for the. I see you paying for the guitars and the. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe. That actually helped me once because I I just bought a guitar, um, and then I I had left my credit card at at a restaurant uh, on accident. Hey, we're going to interrupt the podcast to just give you a quick reminder. Um, If you're a solo, duo, or even trio performer, and you're looking to bring your performance to the next level, you want to check this out. Now, what this is, is I'll send you a quick email twice a month with tips, tricks, and hacks that the pros use to play better gigs and to play more gigs. And as you may or may not know, I've booked and played over 5,000 gigs since 1998. And in these emails, I'm going to share the things I learned over the years with you. And any solo performer will get a lot of value from them. Now, it doesn't matter if you're just starting out and have never played a gig, or maybe you've done a few gigs before but want to gig more consistently. I highly recommend you sign up today. Just go to solo-performer.com to register. That's solo 
www.dashperformer.com. And I'll see you later. I, I just bought a guitar. Um, and then I, I had left my credit card at, at a restaurant uh, on accident. And um, I got an alert on my phone. Someone tried to charge, you know, this fraudulent thing, but it uh -huh. wouldn't go through uh -huh. because I had, you know, maxed out my credit card buying the guitar. <laughs> so moral of the story is... <laughs> Just ma max out your credit card, then you won't be... <laughs> no one can know. <laughs> Exactly. Great. All right, you heard it here first, everyone. <laughs> Financial advice from P.D. Brody. <laughs> <laughs> buy the guitar. <laughs> but if you're going to buy the guitar, make sure it maxes out your credit card. That's that's the key. Yeah. This is the key takeaway here. Safe, it's the safest thing to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, hell, I'm have to I'm have to go try that out. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So you mainly you mainly play in, in New Jersey. Um, so you, your area, what would you say your your area is like? You, you're saying you five nights a week. You, you know, twenty mile radius, a thirty. What, what is kind of? Um, majority of my gigs are within about half an hour. Half an um, hour. Yeah, uh, I sort of li where, where I live at the moment it is super logistical because it's where the Parkway intersects uh, Interstate seventy eight. Mm -hmm. So I can get to New York City in half an hour. I can get up to um, up in the in the hills where where there's all the all the rich money. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can get there in about half an hour. I can I can get uh, down down the shore. You know, the couple times I play there, I can get there in like forty minutes. Um, so it's really convenient to have like a centralized location. Um, as far as my town, uh, it's it's just starting to bite with live music. There's a ton of little restaurants and places and, and now coming I, you know I say coming out of the pandemic but places are more apt to to have live music yeah. locally that I've seen um, my, my problem is I'm booked out so far yeah yeah you know yeah uh, which, which I guess is a good problem to have and that's a great problem um, to have yeah and uh, you know so so I'll, I'll definitely be looking um, in the fall at a lot of the local places, you know, if they keep music going through the winter, mm -hmm. um, just to minimize the commute and also kind of build up the scene yeah. here. Cause, uh, you know, it's just starting to catch in, in the union, in, in, in my area of Union County. Yeah. So is, is that an issue where you are like, say when winter comes, that place is just kind of like, eh, we're not having music cause people aren't coming out or is that an, a non-issue? It's, it, it usually slows down regardless from December through Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. It was like a month and a half, two months where, you know, things slow down a little bit. I maybe go from four nights a week to, you know, two, two to three. Uh -huh. um, and it really hurt uh, during COVID because a lot of places couldn't be outside right. in the winter. Um, so I, I, I was down to like, you know, w one or two nights a week, you know, through January. But then as soon yeah. as... Uh, the nice weather hit, you know, things things exploded. Yeah. Um, and then um, it was really funny, and, and, and I'm, I don't know if you had this, if you saw this down, you know, where where you live in Florida, but, you know, they, they'll build these structures outside, uh -huh. but it's basically like the inside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, outside, so they can have... <laughs> right. It's a, it's a tent, <laughs> and it has walls, and they even put air conditioning in it, and... <laughs> Uh, no, not so. But, it, but, it, but it's outside, so right? It's COVID safe. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird. <laughs> they, they were doing that in Louisiana, in Florida, not so much. Because where I am, it's we're close to the the water, and it's mostly like tiki. So everything's outside here anyway. You know, got it. Right. Yeah, so it's like tiki's and stuff like that, and um, so it's kind of a covered area, but it's not like walled in or anything. But um, that's that's the funniest thing I'm finding about Florida, especially this is my first summer here. You know, Louisiana. It, it's hot. It's almost just as hot as it is in Florida, you know. But yeah. we, we play inside in the summer. You know, there's air conditioning. We Over here, there. <laughs> if it's 180 degrees outside, we're still playing outside, man. It's, it's people, Woof. yeah, they, they, they love it, man. In fact, I, I went to yeah. see uh, Dave Matthews last night. It was an outdoor concert, and it was, it was, nice. it was hot. Oh, you should have saw Dave at the end. I mean, drenched. His shirt was like, looked like you took a hose and just, you know, <laughs> sprayed him down man that dude was the dude was hot but, yeah that's what yes yeah, you know that's another thing you know regional the regional differences in in playing a gig is is you know interesting and worth noting you know it might be a little different if you're 
north or south or whatever, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, uh, I remember I was playing down in Texas when I was on the road one time, and it was 98 degrees. We were outside. Oh, oh yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Bring a fan. <laughs> So what's the? I know I know you do that from time. So you, you have your main area you play in, you know, thirty minutes away and all that, and that's where you do the majority of your work. But you just like, um, and I guess it's, it's for you. It's just for fun, really, huh? You just like to take road trips and go play gigs and stuff like that. Right? Yeah, um, I'll sort of plot my route, you know, to go see family, and then if there's anything along the way, um, I'll honestly just go on Google and, and, and say, you know, live music in. And make this up in 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 nowhere still Ohio, you uh-huh. know, and see you know see what's popping, and if there's anything along the way, um, it's a lot of cold calls and, and you know cold emails and stuff, mm-hmm. but I've, I've found a lot of success, um, and and you'd be I think you'd be surprised how open a lot of these other people are in different markets, you know, bar owners, restaurant mm-hmm. owners, club owners, who you know, oh, this East Coast guy is. You know, yeah. he's coming through on tour, you know, we'll book him for, for a night. That's how I found Stanton, Virginia, where, where I'm playing this Saturday. Wow. Um, I was going down to Nashville, and it's sort of, it's probably about two, uh, about a third of the way down to Nashville mm-hmm. from where I'm at. And, um, you know, I've built a little following in this little town in western Virginia up at the mountains. Yeah. Um, you know, because I played there, they liked me, they've had me back. Uh, there was one, I think one year I played there maybe half a dozen times, like every other month I was there. <laughs> wow, that's cool. So, it's, uh, it's cool to, and it's cool to play in other scenes. And, yeah. Um, if you're like me and you have CDs to sell, that also helps, because when, when, when I first dropped my record here, you know, everybody, everybody bought it, and I was, mm. had, you know, a lot of momentum with that, and then it sort of trickled out to where I was selling a handful every every weekend but mm. you go to to a new place and you know you're you're kind of a yankee or you're not staying there for a long time people yeah. will you know they'll buy your record it's like hey if you, if you come through again you know we'll come out and see you or or even if you come through we have a place to stay we have a guest house and such yeah. and such and yeah. you know you'll you'll find that when you when you get on the road and mm. it just you know expands your audience and mm. it's been it's been fun i love the diy yeah. tour stuff yeah Really fun. So, but would you um, like, like financially speaking, though, is it is it worth? It? Would you do it for a long, sustained period, or is it just not, not financially feasible? Uh, the, the longest I've ever done it is a couple weeks, um, and and the only reason it's financially sustainable is because you know I, I try to plot it with family or friends near nearby. You know, as many right. couches as you can crash on. You know, that helps with, with the overhead. But, yeah. Um, I think if you if you break even but you had a good time, that's that's sort of my my oh, thing. Yeah, man, that's that's it's a it's a paid vacation, right? <laughs> Basically, yeah, if you break you even, know, yeah. And the, yeah, you know, and, and and each time you do it, you know, I've done it maybe four or five times now, and, and uh-huh. each time it gets a little bit bigger. So then, you yeah. know, but at, at at this point, I I do make a little bit. You know, I make some money when I'm on the road. You yeah. know, the beginning it was sort of like this break even kind of thing. But yeah. Yeah. You know, now, now, you know, the networking, and now there's a couple places in Stanton that I can play at and call yeah. up and say, hey, I'm coming down. Yeah. Well, man, so, we got, we got to try to get got you got, try to get you down to Florida, man. It's, I'd love to. Yeah, I'd man. I'd love to. And anytime you're up this way, you know, I got, yeah. I got places. Yeah. Uh, so so what's, what's the farthest you've traveled to, to do that? What's the, I, know you, <laughs> I know one summer you put, like, what, a couple of thousand miles on your car, huh? It's, I did. I went clear across to California. Wow. Um, so coast to coast, and, uh, New Jersey to California. Coast to coast. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, you know, I went to, I went through, through Nashville, Memphis, Austin, Texas, uh-huh. uh, Nebraska. Um, or else I played at Colorado. Colorado's got some fun places out there. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's just, I've, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed getting out and seeing everything outside of my little Jersey Scene and um, it's 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 I, you know, I've, I've made fans. I got fans in Iowa that I've met. You uh-huh. know, it's, uh, who, who offered, hey, if I'm stopping through, you know, hit them up on Facebook and they'll put yeah. me up. You know, it's re- really really neat to see the people who help who will extend a hand to you when you're when you're on the road and trying trying to do this deal. Yeah, that's fun. So the Brody Nation truly is 
nationwide. Grow Your Nation is nationwide. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been it's been really fun to expand it over the years. Nice, nice. And I'm hoping once once all this COVID stuff is over, I can just keep keep doing it. You know, I haven't done the the, the tour thing cross country in, in a couple of years now, but you yeah. know, I want to get back to it uh, once everything opens up and it's safer to do so. Right. So so next tour, what uh, vehicle are you taking? It's a good question. Uh, well, I, I'd recently bought a, a bought a beater truck. It's an old Nissan Pathfinder. Uh, thing thing looks horrendous, but yeah. it, it, listen, that thing is started up every time I turn the key. Uh. Um, all my gear fits in the back, so that'll probably be what I take, assuming uh, assuming I'm not burning through quarts of oil. Wow! But, so uh, you you would feel safe taking that beater truck cross country? You'd be no problem. I would start slow. <laughs> I'd, I'd maybe do like a like maybe I'd go down north. To, I'd, I'd start going down to North Carolina with it, uh, take it back. All right, then I can go further with it. Uh, but uh, you know, it, it's it, you know, and and I, I can sleep in the back if I if I do so choose. And I, you know, it's good for camping. All right. So how many miles is I'm on this a, truck? I bought it with 127k on it. It's a 98, which so that's not that bad. Wow. Um, yeah. All, all, the, all the fluids are clear, trans fluid looks good. So um, it just, you know, there's a hole in the fender where it's rusty and <laughs> you know, the headlights kind of falling out of it. But it could run, man. It's perfect so, gig truck, man. Yeah. It is. You know, there's that uh, the parable about the musician who puts $5,000 a year in a $500 car for a $150 gig. You know, You're living that, huh? This. <laughs> Living that life, <laughs> nice. <laughs> and then I come home and there's my Corvette, and I and I got I got a new Hyundai that you know oh. semi reliable. So <laughs> wow, <laughs> man, so you could be like the Jay Leno of musicians soon, huh? Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> I've had more more of a more of a budget to to, to do so, but uh, well, dude, you know, yeah, I, hope, I hope you make it huge, so that you can, you know. Get that car collection like you want it, and the guitar collection. That's, that's <laughs> I'm gonna try. Yeah, you know, I, I've I've thought about this over over the years, and like you know, I I love the big stardom thing. Don't get me wrong, but you know, if I can live the life I want playing music, and you know, have have you know some left over, you yeah, know, that's that's my goal. You know, the big stardom thing. Who Man. knows? But if I can sustain myself doing this, I, that, yeah. that's that's really my goal. You know, I. I, I I'm with you on that. Um, so, as every musician, I started out wanting to be a big star, da 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 da, and then you know, I'm, I'm kind of addicted to all these music documentaries on Netflix and Hulu and everything, and I come to realize that man, you know what? I, it's it's not all it's cracked up to be. You know, you what we see, you know, they get up anytime they want, they have fun, they play music, but you don't see everything that goes into it and all the. Uh, I don't know all the all the tumultuous relationships that it seems to foster because you know you have to be on the road twenty four seven and you know you have to do yep. the things you have to do to sustain that type of career. Um, you know, man, I, I I tell you what, if I if I had to go back and had my choice, I would do it exactly the way I've done it because I I like I agree. You know, um, yeah, it it. it 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 just seems a lot more. I guess on the surface, it just seems like a more like more easier life than it really is. I don't I don't know. I don't know. And probably a good thing I didn't make it when I was in my twenties because I'd probably be dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. I still don't have much sense, but I didn't have much sense when I was twenty for sure. <laughs> so. Yeah. You know, you see these kids that quote unquote make it on these shows, and like they have the, the one single and the one record, and then nobody's nobody hears their name in two three years and that's honestly not the career that i want you know i'd, I'd want yeah. something more sustainable mm -hmm. if that means sacrificing the top end of success you know what i mean yeah but but, but let's get let's talk about that for a minute because like so these guys you know they may have a year or two where they're making a, a good bit of money and then next thing you know they probably are working at burger king or whatever they have to do right whereas a guy like you me you know for all these years you know over the course of you know like so myself, I've been doing solo acoustic for 22 years, almost 23 years now. You know, 
in that period of time, I, you know, I've been able to pay my bills and buy houses and make, you know, make car payments and live a decent mm-hmm. life, you know, and, and a good life without much stress, you know, whereas these other people, I mean, maybe they made all their money in one year and it's all gone already and they're struggling, you know. Um, yeah, I'd much rather have the sustained career at a, at a medium level than, you know, just blowing up and then blowing back down again. Exactly. Unless you're like that one in a billion where you're like the Rolling Stones, you know I mean? Like, <laughs> you just do it forever and ever. Or, yeah. <laughs> Keith Richards. <laughs> you, you see that thing where it's like every musician that dies takes a year of their life and gets Keith Richards. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't see that one, but my, my favorite is we have to think about what kind of world we're going to leave Keith Richards. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. That. Yeah, gotta love them, man. It would it, be it'd be it'd be great to to achieve that level, but I think I think the way that the industry is set up now, I don't know. It, it's yeah, it's unachievable now. It, how, it can, yeah, yeah. It, it you know yeah, that's the great thing about that era. You know, the seventies, sixties. They were inventing the stuff. They were you know you know making stuff great, and that that's that's the, where the greatness is in rock and roll, in my opinion. And um, it's just, it can't be replicated, you know. It's just it's so watered down now, and um, like and again, these music shows and things like that. Every you know, I don't know, just uh, yeah, th- that era is gone. You, you're never going to see the Stones or the Beatles again, you know. Yeah, you know, even, even I went to this rock and roll camp when I was a kid, and they talked about it's called the Gear Theory, right? And it's like you have the first gear, which is like kind of like your regional bands um you know and then you have your second gear which would be like the the people you see on mtv and you know the known entities then you have your third gear which are like legends like mm. Beatles, jack michael jackson right uh rolling stones whatever you know and it's like how many artists currently would would you see on that third gear to where 50 years from now we're playing their songs Right. I, I can't I can't really think of one. No. <laughs> no. You know, where that that's gonna stand the test of time. Yeah. Like those artists were, you know, Whitney Houston. Yeah. Um yeah. It's 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 few and far between, honestly. Yeah. So, so in you, in your opinion, but, uh, who's who's the last like guitar hero? Like who's the youngest guitar hero that's out there oh, right man. now? Uh well if you're in the know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um there, there's a cat. Um, he's been playing with Chris Stapleton, uh, Marcus King. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You ever heard of, heard of him? Oh, God. That uh, dude's yeah, voice. He, well, he, he, yeah, he played with Dumpster Funk. He did a uh, song with Dumpster Funk, who was some friends of mine. But, um, yeah, I love Marcus King's voice, man. That guy, he's just kind of, he's kind of like a, a it's airy, breathy, but bluesy soul. God, I love his voice. And his mm-hmm. guitar playing. Is, and he's like, 20, he's like 23, 24. Yeah, he's got a little baby face, it's too. Unbelievable. A little baby. Yeah. Oh, always <laughs> smiling, has a little baby face. Yeah. Love that guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's good. I'd say he's, <clears throat> you know, if you're looking at someone who has musicality, you know, for yeah. sure. Him. And then uh, there's another blues guy out of Mississippi, uh, Chris Kingfish. Stone Ingram. Yep. They call him Kingfish. Kingfish. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. He's and and I think only I think he's maybe twenty twenty one. Yeah, but uh, incredible blues chops, and he, I think he yeah. was up for a grand a blues Grammy this past year. Mm-hmm. Um, we're friends on Facebook, and okay. he gave me a shout out on one of his videos, which was neat. Oh, um, nice! Like, I, I kind of I kind I kind of fangirl a little bit. But, <laughs> um, yeah. but he's a, a, an insane guitarist. Yeah. And, uh, um. So so I think if if you know where where to look, uh, music is alive and well. Mm-hmm. Um. And it's sort of cool. I've, there, there's been some kids who've come by local the local open mic scene here. I host mm-hmm. my own jam up this way, and I'm kind of entrenched in the North Jersey open mic scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, some kids have come by, and, and, and they're just super. And uh, a couple of them, you know, they've come and sat in at my gig, or we'd split a gig, and, you know, they'd get the experience yeah. of yeah. maybe not playing a whole three-hour set, but they'd play right. my set break, or I'd give them an hour and pay them for the hour kind yeah. of thing. Nice. Um, you know, get them out, get them out there. So it's kind of yeah. cool to, uh, yeah. Like I'm not the young gun anymore, kind no, of. No, <laughs> no, not not even close. So <laughs> in my area right now, in in Sarasota, Florida, there's this kid named Champ Jackson. He's ten. He might okay. be eleven by now. 
my God, this guy is so good. And not only is he good when he plays, he's got what I call the spirit. You know what I mean? He has the spirit. You could tell uh, it's just flowing through him. This guy, I'm telling you, man, it, I don't know when it's going to be, but Champ Jackson, watch out for that guy. He's going to – Champ Jackson. Champ Jackson, yeah. Okay. Yeah, man. Um, this kid is going to be something no, soon. Not. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I love to see but, – but, but getting back to that, though um, – it's not like it was when you had the Beatles and the Stones where everything was just kind of um, in one place. You know, you, you had the radio, you know, you might have had a TV show or something. And everybody, you know, watched the Beatles on Ed Sullivan or whatever, right? Now everything is just so spread out, it's hard to just find that one common player or that one common thing that everyone loves and agrees on and makes great. But like you said, though, if you know where to look, there's a lot of great music happening right now. It's just so segmented that, you, you know, it's, right. it's not mass. It doesn't have mass appeal because it's so segmented, you know? Right. And, and I think it's, it's the sign of the times, you know, the last time, you know, you think of sixties coming out of, coming out of the war and the economy was kind of weird. And, you know, it's kind of fostered this mus- musical revolution. You know, you had mm-hmm. Hendrix and, and, Janice and all of, you know I think I think another one of those if it's not already happening is definitely uh, it's around the corner yeah um, just given the times are in and every, everybody wants to say something yeah so I think this is a great it's a great time if, if, if you're really listening and you're honed in to your local scene or you you look at the other scenes around you um, this is a time where I think a lot of good music's going to come out I, I strongly believe that yeah I man I totally agree with you i had a similar thought the other day that it, it just seems you know with this it's uh you know everything is in the country it, it's a lot like the 60s isn't it you know where it's kind of this divide and you know mm-hmm. and um yeah but, everybody's been home with their guitars for a year and a half so. <laughs> right right <laughs> so i wanted to ask you about nightmare gigs what's the what's the most nightmarish gig you ever had Oh man, I've had a couple. Um, <laughs> Haven't we all? <laughs> when I uh, yeah. when when I first started out, uh, I, I had a woman do it doing my booking for me, and she booked me at this. It was supposed to be this festival down in Atlantic City, and I was like, "Oh, cool!" I, and I'd never been there before, so I was ex- you know I was expecting something close to Vegas, you know, casinos and lights and yada yada. And uh-huh. I ended up uh, my gig. She had booked me for this quote unquote festival. Um. It was a place called the Le Grand Fromage, which is the, the big cheese. Big cheese, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm thinking, like, again, I'm thinking casinos and bright lights, and this is my moment, or whatnot. Uh. The Le Grand Fromage. I, I was driving. I was driving into AC, and the GPS said, "Arriving at destination." And I'm looking around. I said, "We're in an alleyway." <laughs> the Le Grand Fromage was a dive bar down this alleyway. Nice. <laughs> Half the sign was all, all it said was Maj. The half the sign was <laughs> lit up, and uh, I played to uh, the bar, my, my set. I played to the bartender, uh-huh. the girl I was dating at the time, who came down, and thank God the band of teenagers that played before me stayed. Oh wow! <laughs> that was my summer solstice festival. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I didn't last much longer with this booking lady. I'll tell you. Well, that I right hope now. not. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there was that, and then um, this. I, I, I it's not a new place to me now, but I had a debut at this place. I, I always wanted to play at. My friend got me the recommendation. She got me in there, and um, just for whatever reason, like my sound was just horrible. My my guitar was feeding back, and I think I was getting over cold, so I was nasally, and 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 like I'm thinking, you know, I plugged in everything. I didn't know my speaker was on, so there was a big pop, and everybody, uh-huh. you know, it made everybody jump, and I'm sitting there <laughs> like, they're, they're not going to... the last time I play in this town ever again. <laughs> um, but they invited me back, and I found a better show then. Everything went cool, and now it's like one of my regular spots. So. Oh, nice. But uh, the, first, the first time I played there, I was like, they're not going to ask me back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's always a sinking feeling. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, on that note, so um, what what kind of gear are you using at your at your acoustic gigs nowadays? 
Uh, I have, uh, well, aside from my, my many Martin guitars, um, <laughs> I have, uh, I have, uh, I, I run it through a QSC 12 speaker, 12 inch speaker. Mm-hmm. Um, and a little, I have a little Mackie board that I borrowed from uncle Roy. Uh. Um, and by, uh, and by that, I mean, uh, he, he loaned to me and I've not given it back yet. <laughs> right. Nor, um, nor will he get this, back anytime soon. Going on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's going on several years. He's got, he's got plenty of them, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so nothing crazy. Um, the little Mackie boy, you know, super portable and I have mm. it to where I can make it from the car to the, to the venue in one trip. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, I got the, I got the speaker in a little carry case. The board is in there as well. My guitar is in the other hand mm-hmm. with my my mic stand, and it all just kind of you know I've streamlined it to make to make it easy. Yeah, um, you know, I, I try not to make more than one trip to the car if necessary. That's beautiful. Um, so, yeah, I find a lot of guys get started, trip. get get hung up on the gear and all that, and it's re- you really don't need a whole lot. You need, like you said, you need one of these little powered speakers, probably a twelve yeah. inch minimum. Um, yeah, twelve. Yeah, 12, I, I'd say I, I would get the twelve just because it gives you a feeling. You know, you can get smaller, but yeah. then you got to buy something else. Right, to get right. Bigger, you know, so yeah. Get get the twelve. <laughs> yeah. And personally, I use a fifteen because um, it's not much difference in size, and I, I like. True, true. You know, when, when I play, man, I like to because you know when you're solo acoustic, I you, you're taking up. You're trying to replicate a whole band, right? So I like to crank that bottom right. end on my guitar. I even like to, when I beat on it, I like to make it sound like a kick drum when I beat on the guitar. You know, right. I like I like that thump. You know, a lot of a lot of guys don't do that. They kind of have it really thin. You know, set like it would be for a band. You know, when you're a band and you have the acoustic, you know, right. you, you don't want all that bottom end in it because it interferes with other things. But yeah, when you're by yourself, man, crank that bottom end. <laughs> oh yeah, sure, sure. But that's why that's and why then, I use um, the fifteen. Yeah, nice. And then um, speak, speaking to that point, um, I also use a loop pedal. Yeah. So I can like lay down like a rhythm track and then play some lead over it. Mm, yeah, th- um, those are fun. And that, yeah, yeah, it's a little um, Boss RC30 looper. Oh, yeah. Uh, which that's just a little single. I've, I've actually. That's a little single pedal. Uh, it's a double right? pedal. Oh, it's a double, okay. It's a double pedal. Double, okay. And, and uh, the reason I like the double is there's a designated stop pedal. You don't have to double tap. To gotcha. Stop or loop or anything. Yeah. Um, so highly recommend that. Uh, that was maybe two hundred seventy-five bucks, something like that. But uh, but again, it helps as a solo person because you can sound like a duo or trio. You can lay down that rhythm. Sure. You can do some percussive things on the guitar right. and right. record it and loop it. And, yeah. Uh, honestly, just sitting around working on playing lead, you know, in my room, mm-hmm. you know, I use the looper and it's helped. You know, it's been yeah. it's been a tool not just for the show but to help my chops. You know, at home. Yeah. So yeah, good point. And then I have a, and then I got a harmonizer pedal that modulates my voice to the third and the fifth. So I, yeah. you know, I click that on. You know, if there's some choruses that you know need to sound a little thicker, mm-hmm. um, I don't do it all the time. You get those people who like lay on the, har- the yeah. harmonizer all night yeah. long. <laughs> yeah. No, you, you, so you know, special e- I talk it in right? Yeah, special effects aren't special if you use them all the time. You know, and um, yeah, same with the looper. You yeah. know, you're from. You're from Louisiana, you know about you know when you season food, like you know you got to season it just right. <laughs> well, no, from Louisiana, we put all that pepper. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. It's not enough pepper. <laughs> That's not hot enough. <laughs> no, no, you're right though about that. Yeah, it is a seasoning. Yeah, and uh, even with the looper, man, the loopers are so much fun though. But you gotta. You know, you don't use it. It's it just breaks. The, I think when you're doing a show, you know, you got to kind of have a few songs where you're just playing the guitar and singing, and then right. if you play harmonica, then bring in the harmonica, and then do a couple of more tunes where you're playing guitar and singing, and then do one where you do a loop. Yeah, it just you you, you kind of peak and valley it that way, where it's not just you know the pressures are all the same all night long. You know, you just kind of bring in your little right. special effects here and there. You know. Right. Don't don't lean, lean on it all all night long. Right. You know, it's, it's nice for, for it's nice for flavor here and there. It's just something that you uh, use sparingly, and it's it's even more it's even more special when you use it when you do use it. You know. Right. As mm-hmm. as opposed to just all night long, you hear this like ghost harmony. <laughs> right. For three hours. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, it kind of breaks people out of their you know if they're doing something else or having a conversation on their phone, it might break them out of that zone yeah. you know because they're hearing something a little different 
Um, so in, on the gear note, when you started out, what gear did you start out with? Like, is your has your setup improved since then, or is it pretty much the same? Or oh yeah, uh, I started out. Um, I had a Fender Passport. Oh yeah, <laughs> which is uh, it's got those two little speakers that fold out of the soundboard, right? And you can carry it. Yep. Uh, I had that. I had a. Did I have my Martin at that point? I, I might have had my Martin. Uh, but, you but I started had out with a Martin. Fender Dang. Guitar. That's, yeah, well, <laughs> that's, yeah. That's, I, that's, I went high end and didn't look yeah. back. That's that's a flex, man. That's what they say nowadays, right? A flex. <laughs> I, I, Flexing saved up, the I, I, I got I got my first salary job. I saved up my paychecks. Uh-huh. Uh, my buddy Rob, a guitar singer, gave me the deal. And I said, yep. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it, it started off this little Fender Passport thing, which which for, you know, at that time, you know, it worked, and, and, and I used that until the rooms got too big for it. Yeah. Um, and then I upgraded to the QSC, and that's mm-hmm. the, the powered speaker thing is, is was a revelation because yeah. yeah. then I had more ceiling. You know, I could crank it and yeah. not get feedbacky and mm-hmm. a lot more tonal opportunities. So, um, so do you but see- yeah, I didn't really start off with, like, a crappy rig. You know, that yeah. did me well for a lot of years. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I always say, you know, gear's not that important, but get the best you can afford, you know? Yeah, and, exactly. And if you can afford just crappy stuff, then cool, you can make you can make that work. Because even the, the inexpensive stuff nowadays is pretty damn good, you know? Yeah, I mean, I have I've a friend who's getting into it, and she was asking me, you know, how much should, should she spend? And I said, you know, all in, you know, in all honesty, you know, if you're doing little, little rooms, you know, you can be in, you know, all in maybe five, six hundred bucks. You should have you told know, her to get, max get, out her credit get, card. Well, <laughs> what, right. I mean, what are you she doing? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, yeah, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, you don't need to keep up with the Joneses. It, it just it has, no. has to work for you first and foremost. Right. And it also has to put on, it also has to put on a good show, yeah. you know, because you don't want to be cranking it and and have the sound kind of bottom out and right you know set, sound like you're doing too much through it yeah. um so you know just look look what other people have and see what they're using and see how if that can work for you and mm-hmm. um read up on reviews and stuff but uh you know ultimately it has to work for you and what you do mm-hmm. um some people have just a little acoustic amplifier and they run their pa through it and they make it sound good yeah yeah and that's that's if that's what you know, if that's how they make their bread. Hey, yeah. if you like it? I love it. <laughs> cool. And so, with your QSC, you're setting up behind you, or you kind of have it out in front, and you're just monitoring that way. Would you? How do you set that up? It, it depends on on the room. Um, so I like it behind because because I only bought one because at the time mm-hmm. that's all I could afford. So mm-hmm. I don't have a monitor, mm-hmm. um, and it's sort of gotten me used to playing without a monitor. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I like it when it's behind me, so I so I can hear myself. Mm-hmm. Um, but I usually like to set it in front of me, facing out somehow. Gotcha. Um, that's that, that's how I've gotten the least amount of feedback and stuff. Uh. Um, but again, it depends on the room. So, sometimes I'm squished into a little corner, and I have no choice. Right. Um, so I got what I got, and just got to dial it in throughout the night. Um, you know. It's fun, you know. When you walk into to a, especially like, like a new place, and I kind of like survey the spot for a minute, and mm-hmm. <laughs> just visualize where everything goes, and I try to make it nice so there's not cables everywhere. Right. Um, and I've also found the placement of the tip jar is paramount. Oh yeah. So give um, give us some tip jar placement <laughs> tips. Tip jar. Tip jar tips. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is your PD bro. Tip, tip jar, jar tip. tip. All right. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Um, if, if people have to, if people have to go out of their way, sometimes they might not. So you want to make it convenient for them on the way out, uh, or as convenient as 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 you can. Yeah, you know, if someone's like passing through, whatever. You know, mm-hmm. there's one gig I play at. Uh, I'm sort of in this little corner, so I can't. I usually set up my case. That's my tip up. Uh-huh. Um, so here I have no choice. So I kind of have to hang. Like they they have these. Um, like buckets they use for like the big drinks, like the fancy mojitos, uh, not mojitos, but they, it's like a punch bucket thing. Uh-huh. So I hang one of those on, on my mic stand. Um, but I find like people, and, and you know, maybe it's because of COVID, uh, whatever, but less people want to like come up 
and drop money in the bucket. You mm-hmm. know, they'd, they'd rather have it somewhere on the way out, you know, where it's convenient for them. Yeah. Um, so I found the easier you can make it for them to tip you, yeah. the more you'll make in tips. <laughs> <laughs> makes the makes more, sense. The more of the story. Yeah, yeah. But, but I love that idea of having it on the way out. You know, that's... Uh... That's good. Do, so, do you do you set up like a little Venmo thing or anything like that, also, or is just strictly cash? I I, I started my Venmo last year uh-huh. uh, during COVID because I did a lot of virtual shows from my bedroom. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, before that, I didn't have Venmo, but now that's like the like the way of the world. So, yeah. Um, I have I have that available now, yeah. and um, honestly, pe- people tip cash more so than I've yeah. I've found. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, um, yeah. it's easier. You know, they dig mm-hmm. through their pocket for mm-hmm. five seconds, as as opposed to like, oh, what's your Venmo? They have to type it in, and then mm-hmm. you got to confirm the phone number. Right. And you this, that, and the third. So, yeah. Again, you know, whatever, whatever's easier for the people. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'd say, I'd say it's maybe a maybe a te- less than ten percent ratio due to Venmo. Yeah. I've experienced. Yeah, um, at least from live shows when I, when, it, when when it was virtual, you know, had, you know, we didn't have a choice. But, right. Yeah. Um, out out in the wild, I'd say it's less than ten percent. Yeah, well, it's it's right in line with my experience too. Also, so um, it, it, I think that's the, that's the, every time you know I always get these people coming up like, hey man, I'm trying to Venmo you. Which the last four of your your phone number? I'm like. Come on, Venmo. Just you know, make this easy for people. Why? Why? Exactly. Right. <laughs> you know? And I, I, I get yeah, the feeling it's nobody's fault. That's just the system. Yeah, yeah. I get the feeling that I missed out on a lot of tips because of that, though. Because I see people, yeah. you know, looking at my Venmo thing, putting it in their phone, and then yet at the end of the night, there's no Venmo tips. <laughs> so I'm like, right. yeah, I know yeah. what happened. <laughs> you, know, you didn't know my my phone number, of course. You know. Mm-hmm. Oh well. What you gonna do? So, um. Now you talked about you do an open mic, you host an open mic, and we all agree that's a great place for people to get started. What would like so? Let's say I'm trying to find my first gig and I go to an open mic. What would be what would be the advice you have for me? Um, if if you're not comfortable with what you're playing, don't play it. You want to set a good first impression. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, be rehearsed on your way in so it, so it looks seamless right even mm-hmm. if you don't know what you you know make it look like you're on your game yeah. you know um and then you know shake hands with the bartender mm-hmm. um if the owner's around you know shake hands with him you know make sure you know make, make nice so 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 they'll be listening to you yeah you know so so if it's the owner maybe maybe he'll say or he, or she will say you know hey are you available on a friday or saturday mm-hmm. or you know, if it's a bartender, the bartender will say, "Hey, really like your set. Do you have a card?" Mm-hmm. Um, so they can pass along. So also um, bring bring cards. <laughs> bring cards, right? Yeah. I've found business cards. You know, it, it may seem like a little frivolous thing. Um, get you a nice business card. You know, make them nice. You know, mm-hmm. because yeah, you might spend seventy five, hundred bucks on however many five hundred thousand cards, whatever. Oh, why am I doing this? Well, as soon as that card gets you, you know. A five hundred, seven hundred fifty thousand dollar wedding, mm-hmm. yeah, right? <laughs> or or gets you in a place that pays you on a consistent basis and has you back on a consistent basis. It pays for itself, right? So it's those little details um, that that go pretty far. Um, you know, you, you don't want to you, you don't want to write your phone number and name down on a napkin. You right. know, it's not really the not the wave. You know, so get gets you a nice business card. You know, with your name and a contact, and you want. You want to have people, and, and this is what I'm coaching. You know, some some of these kids that are coming up. You know, I said you want to give people a place to go, whether it's a Venmo or you know, an email or, or, or a contact number. You know, mm-hmm. so people that like you, they that they want more, whether it's to hear you or to book you, so they can hear you more. Mm-hmm. Um, and you want to make it easy. You know, you, I, I sort of have my socials <clears throat> streamlined, right? It's it's P D Brody or P D Brody Music. You know, it's not like. You know, PD Brody is 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 the the Facebook, and then my YouTube is like Perry one two three. You know, you know it's sort of right, this, this right. streamlined system. So they yeah. well a consistent, consistent brand, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, just give give people a place to go once they hear you. That would would be my best advice. Okay. And so. Um, 
would you think you mentioned the owner being there like so let's say i showed up at an open mic and i played and i kicked ass but the owner or the person who books isn't there was it still worth it to go to that open mic in your opinion or should you just wait till the owner or the person who books is actually at that open mic I think so. I think, uh, you know, uh, well, I think, I think you should go anyway. I think any experience is a good experience, mm -hmm. especially if you're just starting out. Mm -hmm. um, and like I say, you know, leave, leave a card or, or ask, you know, hey, who's the contact here and, or how can I get in contact with them? Mm -hmm. um, and then get, get a number. And, and, and if the owner wasn't there, you know, maybe call or say, hey, I was at your open mic. I, uh, I had a really good time. You know, do you book music? other nights a week, yeah, da da da, da. Mm -hmm. um, and you go from there, you know, and maybe, you know, strike up a conversation, and um, you never know. You yeah. know. They might say, hey, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I, I was, <laughs> I had a function to go to, but I'll definitely be there next week if you come back, you know, we'll shake hands then, and I'll see what you got. Yeah. Or they might say, hey, yeah, I heard from the bartender that you were great, you know, here's a bunch of dates we have open. You yeah. know, it could go any way from that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you always got to kind of be prepared for any kind of situation. But bottom line is you're, you're networking, like we had talked about earlier. It's, it's yep. essential. Yeah. Awesome, man. So on, the, on, that, on, that, on that same tip, so if I'm just starting out, what, what advice would you give to somebody just starting out? Like, you know, some kid has a guitar. He says, man, Perry, I want to do some gigs. What, what, what was what was the most important thing you can tell me? The more you do it, the better you get. Um, yeah. Whether whether that's you know going to open mics for a little bit and honing your stage presence and learning songs, um, or if you jump if if you've learned a few hours of music and you jump right in, you know, just the more the more you do it, the the, the better you get and the easier it gets. Yeah. Um, I remember in the beginning, three hours felt like a lot you know, a lot of time to kill. And now it's like, I can almost do it in my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, now I've got, you know, I've got six, seven hours of material and, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it, it becomes easier the more reps you get. It's like, it's sort of yeah. like an athlete. You yeah. Know, the more reps you get in the game, the easier, the easier it gets. The more you, the more tools you have in your tool belt, in your arsenal to use. Yeah. Um, so you just have to start somewhere and, and just keep learning and, 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 and watch people. You know, find whether 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 they're famous, whether they're local, whether whether they're you know, find somebody who you like and who you respect, and, and watch them. You know, I watched a lot of guys who were two and three times my age, and the way they played, and how they sounded, how they worked the crowd, mm -hmm. um, and 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 just kind of honed in on what they were doing, and um, just be a sponge. You know, listen to as much music as you can learn as many songs as, you, as many different songs as as, as you can mm -hmm. um i had a real funny experience i found out you know i've been in the game you know like i say 2013-14 and i found a, a, a shortcoming in my game not that long ago i was playing a gig and it was pretty light the first hour and i, I had one table i was playing to mm -hmm. and at this one table we're like a dozen nine-year-old girls, <laughs> Did and I didn't know what to play because <laughs> I don't know like modern like pop. So I'm sitting up there on my guitar. Right, like, right. Do you do you like the Beatles? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. just learn you know learn as many different kinds of songs yeah. as as you can to oh, cover yeah. a wide spectrum. Yeah, yeah I agree with you know <laughs> on, on that tip. Um, I. I I play Baby Shark a lot <laughs> because <laughs> there are little kids at the thing. And I, I learned it because my, my stepdaughter loved the song a couple of years ago. And so I just happened to know it, you know. And so when I was a little kid, I'm like, you know, they're looking at me. And, and, and it's awesome. I love when these little kids come up and they're just fascinated with the guitar or singing or whatever. And you can tell who they are, you know what I mean? So I always try to... To get them involved, you know, a little kid will come up and just staring at you. Like, you want to hear Baby Shark, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do a verse of Baby and Shark. And at that point to them, you were bigger than Elvis. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So, That's great. Yeah, I think we all have those gaps, though. You know, my my gap... It's like um, I don't I don't do a whole lot of country music. I do maybe maybe twenty country songs, 
And as far as like the modern country, I don't, I don't really mess with that a whole lot. I mean, I, of course, I do yeah. Tennessee whiskey because I mean, you just have to, <laughs> you know. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, but again, like you said, that we all work on. You, you know, as you go, you work on those gaps and you get them filled. But there's always going to be someone's always going to expose something. <laughs> that you don't right. know, you know. There's always gonna be something, you know. Like when I when I moved to Florida, like um, back in Louisiana, I never got a lot of requests for like the Grateful Dead. I moved over here, huh. and I get requests for the Grateful Dead every night. So I'm like, oh, there, you know, oh, there's wow. a there's a gap I need to fill, you know. So let me learn some Grateful Dead tunes, you know. Um, the one thing I will never understand. So I went on tour down south, and then and there's that wet song wagon wheel, right? The what? And I toured. Uh, Wagon Wheel. Oh yeah, Wagon Wheel. Yeah, Darius Rucker. Yeah. 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 So I toured down down south. Not mm-hmm. one request for it. Whatever. I come back to Jersey. Uh huh. The first night I'm back in New Jersey. <laughs> you sound like Hootie. Can you play some Wagon Wheel? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like son of a. <laughs> well, that's interesting because I I, I, I still get requests for Wagon Wheel. Like you know, that's uh. In fact, I learned it. Before it was a Hootie song or, or Darius Rucker, I learned it when it was Old Crow right, Medicine right. Show. Old Crow. Yeah, yep. that's how I, I. It was a little slower, a little more. You know, um, that's how I learned it. And then over the years, I realized people were when they were asking for, it, they were asking for the Darius Rucker version. And I listened to it. And it's a little faster, a little more brighter. So I, I kind of sped it up. And okay, it's it's Wagon Wheel. You know, here's Darius yeah. doing Wagon Wheel. It's just sped up. You know, but I get the Darius Rucker thing a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, compare me to the other black guy who plays acoustic. Oh, like. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's, uh, well, cool. Let's, so let's let's wrap it up in a little bit. But um, so ten songs, ten songs that you think are essential. Like if I, I'm starting out, man, what are the like? You can't try to even do a gig without knowing these ten songs, good, bad, or indifferent. What, what do you Ooh. think they are? Let's see. That's that's a great question. Um, Free Fallen by Tom Petty. Mm-hmm. Um, ten songs. Ooh, oh, give me five. Man. Give me five. Um, I'm putting you on a spot. Give me five. <laughs> Five's good. <laughs> that's even worse. Got to narrow it down even further. Um, oh, I see. You have so Pride many that you have to do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Pride and Joy, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Just give me as many as you um, want. How about that? Just yeah, yeah. Um, wonderful tonight, Clapton. Um, I like to play. Thrill is gone. BB King. Mm-hmm. Um, what else did I play? Uh, Three AM Matchbox Twenty. That, that's that's your your gateway song. Yeah, yeah. We talked about um, that. Something little 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 more modernish. Um, shoot. Uh, I think back to my playlist and what I play. Um, Carolina on my mind, James Taylor, that goes over pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, Joker, Steve Miller Band. Yeah. Another that's gateway song, yes. Another gateway song, yep. That, that's one I, I, I play pretty early on to get everybody grooving. Yeah, that, that is um, my, that is literally my, my test the waters for audience participation. Because if they go, whoo, uh-huh. whoo, you know you got an uh-huh. R. He's, he's, he's even the, the better thing. If one person goes, I, I stop it, and they, they go, whoo, whoo. if one person goes, whoo, whoo, I'm like, oh, man, let's try it again. Then everybody yeah, seems to come in, and it, then everybody does it. And so now I got them. You know, so that's, yeah, that's the perfect that's gateway one. to audience participation song. That's, yeah. Definitely, definitely. I didn't mean to interrupt your train one. of thought, but, you know. Uh, what else did I play? Uh, Iris by the Goo Goo Dolls. Mm. Um, the ladies like that one. Um, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta take care of the ladies, man. That's uh, <laughs> always well-known fact, man. You play what the women want, the men will stay and spend money. <laughs> it's <that's laughs> yep. just how the world works. Precisely. Yep. Um, those I would say are, are like my my go-to's. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I, I go through have so many songs a night. See, see, I don't, I don't even. So, someone asked me how many songs I know, and I, I couldn't put an exact number on it. I just, yeah. I know it's at least, at least five, six hours. Yeah. Of stuff like I know, I know pretty well. Yeah. Um, 
I'm doing a lot of blues lately. But I, had mm. to, I did DB, did Stevie Ray. Mm. Uh, it's a great question. Yeah. I forget how many I stopped at. I think I'm at like seven right now. But. No, it doesn't have to be. I was just, you know, yeah. trying to get, you know, just trying to, you know, as, as I do this podcast, just trying to get a feel for what people, you know, like, if you're in a crowd of people, what are you going to, you know, what, what songs would you absolutely have to know? Like, you wouldn't, yeah, you wouldn't want to do a gig without having these songs in your pocket. Yeah. You might not necessarily do them that night but you know you, you right, know right. you know these songs are going to go go over most times most crowds you know yeah yeah um mr Brightside by the killers goes over pretty well yeah and that, I, I find that age dependent though you know when you have like a younger crowd because the, the younger people crowd, yeah they, that's an old song to them now you know so it's like right they grew up with that you know to me it just came out yesterday but that was like like oh six oh eight or something like that but anyway um, Stuff like that. Yeah. Come together by the Beatles. Yeah, always a good one. You, you see, I find things like that that uh, even even younger people know. Uh, or like for me, Drift Away would be one because I I think it was it deep, yeah. Yeah. yeah right. It was a hit in the seventies, and it was Uncle one. Cracker had a hit again with it in the early two thousands or even the late nineties. So it kind of spans a couple of generations, and everybody. Right. You know, young, old know that song. You know, so it's just kind of one of those that I'll just pull out. You know, especially when I'm I'm kind of feeling out of crowd at first, and I'm kind of unsure. You know, is this a younger? You know, where are we going? You know, it's always a good one to yeah, pull yeah. out. There's a uh, one one of the young uh, girls that are coming uh, coming up in the scene up here. She was at open mic, and um, there was a bunch of like guys watching the game, whatever, not really paying open mic any attention. Mm -hmm. So she gets done with her first song and, and her second song. She pulls out "Sweet Caroline." Uh huh. Yeah, do the bah, 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 yep. and she reeled them. She reeled them completely back in. It was nice. So yeah. She she got done and comes sit. At, yeah. Uh, she sits back down at the table and I go, "That was a pro move." <laughs> <laughs> you see that? That was good. She, yeah. <laughs> you see that would have that would have kind of I would have taken pause to that if I was the performer because if they're watching the game. And I'm going to sing Sweet Caroline. I'm expecting you to go dun, dun, dun. And if you don't go dun, 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 then the whole point of playing the song is moot. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's no right. point yeah. in playing Sweet Caroline if no one's going to go dun, dun, dun with you. And if they're watching right. the game, if they're predisposed <laughs> to watching the game, I'm going to be like, man, they're probably not going to sing along. And I'm going to be up here hanging, singing dun, dun, dun by myself like a fool. <laughs> right. <laughs> It was it was a risk, but, but, yeah. but as soon as she started singing That's, it, they hey. turned around and paid attention. Yeah, and it, and you know it didn't hurt that she's like adorable too. So yeah, it's like yeah, that, <laughs> you know I was I was not as good or as adorable at thirteen. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I was I was neither good nor adorable <laughs> at any any point in my life really. <laughs> I just thirteen. <laughs> oh man. Dude, I appreciate you doing this, man. It's, I think uh, people get a lot out of learning from you, what you had to say, man. You made some great points. Um, and I'm just, I, Thanks I just, for having me. yeah, man. And like I said, we've been knowing each other 10 years now. I'm glad to know you as a friend, man. You're a great person. You're a great musician. And, uh, Likewise. Yeah. I got you. Well, thank you. And uh, so, anyway, before we go, let's do. Let's. Um, do you know your dad's link for that video by any chance, or what can people search to find your dad's video? Yeah, uh, if you go on YouTube, uh, the band was called Crying Out Loud, mm -hmm. and the song was called Live It Up. Okay. And uh, it's one. Of, it's one of the first two that come up. Okay. And uh, what about your your social links? If people want to find you and see what what PD Brody's up to, what kind of cars he's buying, what kind of guitars he's putting <laughs> in those cars, and what kind of gigs he's doing? Yeah, um, PD Brody on Facebook, Instagram, uh, my my personal web or my music website, uh, pdbrody dot com. Mm -hmm. um, my I believe I changed my YouTube is, is a PD Brody Music on mm -hmm. uh, on on YouTube. Okay my channel You're welcome to subscribe and um you know yeah i'm trying to post some new content up there some more current stuff nice um i i i'd stopped for a while because uh they were getting kind of trigger happy with the content uh copyright right flagging yeah so i kind of stopped for a while but i'm gonna start putting some new stuff back up there um but yeah, uh, P. P. D. Brody on on all social platforms. You'll be able to find me, and I'm 
if it's a Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, I'm out playing somewhere usually. So. All right. Well, man, I can't wait to. Uh, I mean, we have to get you down to Florida and do a couple gigs, man. So I can't wait to do that, man. That's gonna be awesome. Love to. Yeah, man. Love to, Steve. That'd be that'd be fun. I I had a ball in Louisiana times I've come down. And, yeah, I still got that you know, picture I've of you eating crawfish from... for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Yeah. That was. Uh, we don't have those in Jersey. So no, nor nor should you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. But uh, I pre I I I appreciate you know your guidance. I've learned a lot from you over, over the years, just watching what you do and the way you do it. So you've you've rubbed off on me in a lot of ways, and uh, well, yeah, I appreciate you for that. Well, good man. I'm glad to hear that, man. I'm glad to you know always trying to have a positive effect on uh, you know musicians and especially people trying to learn to do what we do now. You know, it's it's a yeah. it's a craft. You know, and there's a lot more nuance that goes into it than people think, and uh, you know. And like you, I'm happy to teach people. And that's what this podcast is all about. So I appreciate you doing awesome. it. All right, my friend. Mold the mind. Yes. <laughs> Perry and Steve molding the future. <laughs> Look out. Scary thought. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, my friend. We'll catch you next time. All right, Steve. Thanks so much. All right, Perry. Thank you. Comes out. All right, brother.